On the eve of the 20th anniversary of the 9-11 terrorist attacks, uh, we're, we're sharing some of our thoughts and memories from that day. Well, um, I was working at Fox 5 that day, um, along with my colleague Bob Barnard. He's going to join us live here, too, in a second. Um, but I'm going to share my story because I was doing a live report for the morning show. Um, there was this show on Fox at the time called Temptation Island, oh, wow. and we were doing a tie-in just to kind of give you a, a, an idea, right? It, it, Beautiful Tuesday morning, ha ha, we're doing a fun mm -hmm. thing for the morning show. And like everybody, we, you know, the, the first plane hit and we went to that. Lark McCarthy and Michael Gargiulo were on our anchor desk, amazing anchors. And um, then we watched the second plane hit live. So we were on a boat called the Odyssey on the Southwest waterfront. And as soon as that second plane hit, we knew we were under attack, yeah. right? That's when the tone changed. Our news director called us and he said, she said, uh, Holly, you and Mike, Mike Rickard, my photographer at the time, you are going over to the heliport. At the time, Sky Fox was over uh, at the South Capitol heliport. You're going over there and you two are going to New York. Wow. We go to drive over. Terry Tolliver was with us. She was a field producer. And all of a sudden we see smoke coming from this region. <gasps> we get over to the heliport and our pilot comes running out and he's like, the Pentagon's been hit. All air traffic is grounded. <sighs> we turn around. We were like, we're going to the Pentagon. We get to the 14th Street Bridge. Traffic is pouring out of the city. We can't get any further, so we just abandon our news car there. And we start walking, and we walk along the river entrance of the Pentagon. And Mike is just shooting. It's like a makeshift. They're setting up makeshift triage. You hear people on walkie-talkies saying, we need more body bags. We hear a guy literally say, another plane is incoming. That was the Shanksville plane. Yeah. We see the jets go overhead that they send. Um, we end up getting t via a two-way, because the cell phones didn't work, they were jammed, to another photographer, Carlos Gonzalez, who was in a live truck. And we ended up being live on the front side there of the Pentagon for the rest of the day. Um, but our station, Channel 5, was the go-to source. We never went to network coverage. Mm. We covered it here, and especially for the people in Washington, because New York was so bad, right? The only way the families here in Washington could get information mm. on their loved ones was via us. And so I just had a photographer send me, Van Applegate sent me this picture. I've never seen it in 20 years. And it's a picture from the Situation Room. And you see Dick Cheney, Vice President, Condoleezza Rice there. And their TV is on Fox There's 5, Holly. and that's me. And he's like, Holly, this is you. Wow. Um, of all the coverage that I've been a part of, I'm probably the most proud of that, that coverage because we provided a real service yeah. to our viewers um, that day. And Bob, I know you came and took over at the Pentagon after me, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure you feel the same way about being a part of our coverage on Fox 5 on 9-11. Absolutely, but you know, you and Mike and Terry there and Carlos right off the bat was just, uh, you know, fortuitous for our viewers and just such great work on your guys' part. Yeah, I mean, I was frankly in the gym in Adams Morgan when the first one hit. We're all standing around watching when the second one hit. My then fiance and I ran home, uh, and by the time I got uh, to uh, our apartment, there was a call on the voicemail saying, you know, pack a bag, you're going to New York, there's a national emergency. I was actually in a cab on the way to Union Station when I found out the trains weren't going to New York. So we diverted to get as close to the White House as we could, because in my mind, that was the next target. I didn't know the Pentagon had been hit. Um, and, and yet, every time we stopped, I hopped out of the cab and met a photographer, uh, Don Watchard, who's now retired. That was his 46th birthday that day. Um, and they kept pushing us. We'd set up and they'd say, no, the perimeter is extended. Our first live shot that morning was at Farragut Square, uh, right outside the metro station, and it was utter chaos. People were ignoring the traffic lights. There were uh, business people who were heading to the metro home because all the offices emptied out. They were directing traffic, and nobody was paying attention to the traffic signals. It was, it was uh, utter chaos, and then obviously the building Buildings fell and, and people just got really quiet knowing what had happened in New York. And then I was eventually sent over to relieve you at the Pentagon and was there, you know, until about two in the morning and for the next week. And, you know, it was just hard to believe that by looking at the Pentagon and knowing, you know, almost 200 people, we didn't know how many at the, that moment, were killed right there in front of us at the Pentagon. A much bigger story was happening in New York because there were perhaps thousands dead. So it was very strange to see what we were seeing and knowing that in some ways what happened here was being dwarfed by the unimaginable thing of the towers coming down in lower Manhattan. Yeah, I remember our assistant news director, Bob, at the time, Holly Gaunt, saying, whoever would have thought a plane would fly into the side of the Pentagon and that wouldn't be the lead story. Hmm. 
you, you um, know, to your to your point, please. just because it was it was yeah. so much worse in um, New York. Um, I also remember at the time saying, Bob, I don't know if you felt this, but I remember saying, you know, I can't believe I'm this young. I was 30. I'm like, I can't believe I'm 30 years old, and I'm covering the biggest story of my lifetime right now, or at least I never hope it gets any bigger than this. Yeah. Yeah, well, the, the weird thing for me, I, I'm, I'm a kid originally from Long Island, New York, and I knew uh, before I even got out of that cab, diverted from Union Station, that a very good, close, personal friend of ours, actually my mother called on my old cell phone at the time saying, hey, she's the one who said, you, the, the trains aren't running, so I don't know why you're going to Union Station. And by the way, she mentioned this family friend who worked for Cantor Fitzgerald for 20 years, and I knew that, and was there in 93 when the North Tower uh, was, was shook by a bomb in the garage, was still going back to work all that time, and was trapped above where the plane mm. first hit in the North Tower at that moment, had called his wife, who called his mother, and, and you know, so they, the, the word got to me that you know, not only is this a horrific thing, but we know somebody who's right mm. now trapped in that North Tower. So I covered the story knowing that at least one person I knew, and by the end of the day it was several, uh, were killed that day. So that was the tough thing for me, was reporting objectively and trying to be informative and yeah. calm and collected, knowing that people I knew and loved my, my whole life were dead that day. And, and it's nothing now scarier than, than I was in uh, Nashville. On our, we were covering, covering the news that early that morning. And then all of a sudden, you know, obviously everything changed. We were at the airport, and then the planes, they grounded all the airplanes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you look in the sky, and all these airplanes, and you're listening to the radio, all the airplanes are turning around, coming back, they're landing, because they had no idea. Nobody had any idea right. what was going to happen next. Yeah. And then the events started to unfold, and you started to realize what, 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 that we were under attack forever changed this country, and it changed everything. Yeah. Everything, the way we, we move, the way we get around the capital, the way we go through airports, everything changed, and it, it was... It was unbelievable. You know, it was it was really different for, for Aaron and me. I was um, I was in the fifth grade. Wow. Mm -hmm. And I remember my principal came in mm -hmm. and told us to go and watch the news, mm -hmm. which looking back, I, I'm still curious about that decision, but I think they wanted to see, obviously, firsthand what was happening in the country. And as a kid, you don't understand what a terrorist attack is. Mm -hmm. You don't understand the magnitude of the situation or even what you're watching. But what really stayed with me, um, I, was, I was in Rhode Island at the time, was my grandmother was visiting from the Dominican Republic. And as a kid, and I, I think I speak for a lot of uh, kids out there who were you know, kids at the time, you're seeing the adults terrified. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you take your cues from your parents, and in my case, from my grandmother. And as she looks terrified. And that's when I knew if the adults are scared, something is really, really wrong. Uh, so. So, yeah, I mean, that day, for us, we lived a little bit of normalcy, right, as mm -hmm. far as how the airport worked and being able to drop off for, like, eight or nine years. Mm -hmm. And then things obviously changed from then on. I was 17 at the time, a senior in high school, but I was home. We hadn't gone back to school yet. And my best friend, Lindsay, called and said, turn on the TV. And it was the first time in my life that I felt scared for my safety in the grand world perspective. Yeah. And it forever changed, obviously, everyone in our country. Yeah, I will say this, though, um, following September 11th, and Bob, I think you could probably comment on this too quickly, is that never have I felt more unified as a country, and, a, and definitely Absolutely. in what we saw in this city after yeah. the attacks on 9-11. Yeah. yeah, I was just at a... a uh, 20th anniversary ceremony here at Joint Base Andrews this morning and a number of people we talked to this morning off camera were saying how we were so unified then it's so sad that we're so divided now. Mm, right. Mm. Quite a different world in many yeah. different ways. Right. Bob, thank you for sharing that and, and Holly and Wisdom as well. All right, uh, li live picture right now, Ground Zero in New York City this morning. Uh, you can watch our, our coverage of 9-11 anniversary starting tomorrow morning at, at 7 a.m. We'll be right back.